Hello! Welcome to my guide for beginners covering the first 10 turns of Miao Ying and the threats that you can expect in her campaign. Uh, uh, this is a beginner guide for anyone who's playing, but I'm going to be playing a legendary very hard just to show you that it's possible for any difficulty going downwards to do what I'm doing here. Alright, let's get straight into it. Now the key to this, I find, is fighting your battles. You need to get used to fighting your battles because if you don't, you'll, you'll auto-resolve everything and then you'll never actually be able to proceed any further. If you don't enjoy fighting the battles, then, you know, feel free to auto-resolve, but don't expect to ever be able to play on higher difficulties at a certain point. Alright, initially let's have a look at how they play. So, Cathay works off a yin-yang system, and basically if you can keep everything in harmony, which I'll explain later, you will be more powerful than if you do not. It's a substantial bonus and you want to keep it the entire time. That's why this is such an easy faction to play initially. They're also one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful human faction in the game. Uh, so initially, what we want to do is chuck this hero into our army and attack this army here. Right. So it says decisive victory, low uh, cost, but you can win this fight without taking any damage and you should do so because the more damage you take before you start your next fight is the more momentum it will take away from you. The key to this game is momentum. Let's go. It's also a good introduction into fighting your battles, which is a key part of the game. A lot of people aren't confident when it comes to fighting battles, but they're mostly just overthinking it. It's a lot easier than you think, especially with Cathay, because they are the least micro-intensive faction there is, I think. Uh, considering this is my first guide, I'll do a quick run over of how I select my unit. So basically, I click on my first guy, hold the shift key, and click anywhere along the line on which you know, I would like to select. So I want to grab my front line. So grabbing these guys, let go of the shift key now that they're all highlighted, and then you hold the right click and you drag, and you can form them out. So I'd like to have them like that. Grab my archers, do the exact same thing. Now they have the yin yang um, harmony bonus here and if you have a look over here on this stat line you'll see what benefits you get from it and the melee line gets different benefits but just as good all right so we'll grab our balloon and here's going to be our front line because this balloon has an insane amount of health you can easily solo this fight without taking any damage all right now all our stuff is in place the first thing you want to do on this battle map you'll always get this battle map in your first fight and now we're here, now we can move over to here by using the same Today thing. Hold shift, evil. click, spacebar to highlight where the units are going and make everything obvious. Drag. And we put these guys over here in between them as well. This balloon's job is to kill the archers. The archers are the only thing that can harm this balloon. Everything else has to walk past it and will be butchered by our archers. So we get it to aim. It's not the most accurate thing, accurate thing on the planet. Uh, because of the difficulty I'm playing on, these guys won't break straight away. If you're lucky, depending on your difficulty, they will break much faster, and then you can prioritize other targets. Just bear in mind, don't let the balloon fire towards your own units, because it will kill them quickly. Right, I'll bring you back when this has moved on a little bit further. Now, I literally have not touched my archers or my melee line. There's horses coming at them right now. If you want, you can click on Mao Ying and use this ability here. Give them more magical attacks, but they're going to break before they can do any damage. And this guy has successfully broken the archer unit. If you feel like it's important and you aren't very good at microing, put him on defensive, and then once the enemy goes out of range, he won't chase any further. You can also drop bombs on the units that walk underneath you if you like. That's why I put this guy here specifically. Alright, fast forward it again. As you can see, the balloon's taking a little bit of damage. Get Mao Ying, bring her over. Use her spell, you can click on the icon or you can click on the map. Anything within that circle will get the heal. A good thing to do is try to wipe everything out to the last man. Because the more you kill, the more money you will make. Which is important as you can see we've lost a single unit here so much help here if you want you can boost them up a little bit keep them going but they are broken and there you go with that we have lost five units which will replenish over the end turn easily we're not going to have any damage and we can take the money instead of the replenishment now which is nice 250 gold it all counts now with Mao Ying I would recommend you don't have to do this, I'll tell you what the other options are, but I go for Route Marcher. 
and then we will go and attack the next settlement uh, at the capital build up to the crossbows and we also want to start working towards artillery that's 4,000 gold gone and let's go and attack this is essentially the exact same fight so it's going to be a close victory if you were to auto resolve that you take a lot of damage on the peasant units which is unnecessary it's the exact same map so I'll bring you back once we're in position and then I'll show you the end result this time we're going to be dealing with twice as many archers which is still not a threat but good to know what you're dealing with so target the first archer down once he gets into position and starts doing some damage sure why they're walking and speed them up with this button here another option is to grab Mao Ying transform her into her dragon form let's make it cinematic for you guys very cool right we can use her to essentially stop the archers from being a threat it's very easy to do and considering she's a single entity you can heal her back to full health see i changed targets because they've gone to the trees and while they're in the trees it's not as efficient to fire at them, so it's not really worth your ammo. There they are. So they're going to target either the balloon or Mao Ying, and what you do is you just click left and right. And you just keep doing that. You don't have to panic, you don't have to rush. Just nice and slowly, and you're not going to dodge every shot, but you're going to dodge most of the shots. See how they're shooting, and they're missing now? And Mao Ying's taking very little damage. But just take it nice and slow, Don't don't panic. If you get hit by a solid volley, it does happen sometimes. Every now and then they'll change targets, they'll shoot at the balloon. It's all fine. Just keep keep dodging left and right. You can just leave your your melee units and your archers ready to do their thing in their usual location. Because it's an amazing choke point. They're actually running a little bit because they're worried that I'm gonna attack them with Mao Ying. Which is a genuine threat because I am thinking about it. <laughs> I'll just speed this up. Same thing if you fast forward it's because she's such a big unit, it's big motions. Sometimes you do circular motion, sometimes it's more efficient. Uh, it depends on the, the type of uh, archers and the type of unit that you're using to dodge with as well. If you're a smaller unit, sometimes it's better to dodge, especially if you're facing bullets, whereas arrows are much slower. Just try not to click anything on the ground. If this is too many clicks for you, it's completely unnecessary. Still, I can just be going right and left. Take where you go and attack it. Be wary of misclicks. As you can see, she's taken a little bit of damage, but much less damage than she would have taken if she was just fighting them. And I can change target and hit these uh, pumps of melee units here. Very nice target. This balloon's having the time of his life. That priority should always go to the archers. They are the biggest threat for damage in any fight, except for maybe siege units, which will sometimes outplay archers. They should always try and shut down enemy archers. Oh, they are shattered. So what we can do now is, I guess we can turn this guy around here and shoot a volley into these guys. But these archers will take care of them. No, no worries. What we'll do is we'll land Mao Ying in a second. Once these guys are fully engaged. That's that. Turn him around to make sure he's not firing or hit the fire at will button. Now if you are watching this guy, feel free to watch it side by side and just do exactly the same stuff I do. And I promise that you will get through this just fine. Took a bit of damage on the charge there, but I believe it might have been friendly fire. What, what we'll do is move these guys out of the way, move these guys over here. Ready to defend. And they will kill them as they flee. Wind and fire. Perfect. And That's another option, you can drag, click and drag a box, like any RTS game really, and select the units. This isn't a controls guide, but I will give you some quick tips. If you have a unit selected and you want to just deselect one of them, you can hold control and click them individually. Same as selecting them instead of shift clicking. So if I wanted every second unit, I can hold down to control, click every second unit. Cool. And then as many of these guys as we want. Every now and then sprinkle in some magic. 
Now you may have been asking yourself why wasn't I healing the Spearman and the Jade Warrior that lost a unit. The way that it works is if the unit loses an entity, they have 120 entities, if they go down to 119, they cannot come back to life and they cannot be healed beyond a certain threshold. So their total health pool divided by 120 is each individual entity. So that's why there's no point healing them. But single entities having a single health pool, you can heal them to full health depending on their health cap. Alright, got an item. Great item, but we got an item. We will occupy the settlement. Generally, we'll just set it to um, recruitment because that's what I'm going to be doing with it harmony. First. Now it's time to look at the harmony system. We are currently at two yin because of our lord, and to no, just because of our lord. So she gives us a yin a benefit of three, and our, our alchemist gives us a yang of one. So we are at two yin. We want it to be at exactly equal yin and yang at the moment. So we have three yin and one yang so what we need is an additional yin Meowing. so we go into the settlement what we want is growth because growth is the important thing and we get the yin one the same mark that will bring us up to three yin which obviously is negative but what we will do is we will recruit a lord not now but when we need it of yang and that will give us plus three yang which will give us exactly equal so going through meow yin we will look at, focus on her magic chain because that is her greatest strength her ability to heal is amazing, and she also has a very powerful spell called the Talons of Night, which overcast will delete units. A tool fit for the and the alchemist prioritize increasing mobility. And then you can choose what you want to go to. I go down the magic line. Some people are going to want to go down this line because it's interesting. It gives you a buff that you can temporarily put onto a single unit. It's entirely up to you, but always as you can unlock this. So you'll be able to get it at level 1, level 5, and level 10. So spend a point at those levels for that mobility because extra 25 percent mobility is quite big right we now have the region and our next target is wing chain for research i like to go into fletching mentors it does give us positive yin harmony in four turns but we will be out of balance it by that point. the ivory road is our caravan system this is a really great way to make money and gather good items so go into here recruit a caravan and pick one that you like the look of. I like ones that have, you know, a lot of archers. For example, this one here. Too many spears, but a lot of archers still. A lot of cav. If you feel like microing, this would be good for you. But if you're not good at micro, maybe avoid cav. Because they need they need focus. So just get these guys. They come with a bunch of uh, additional replenishment rate, as you can see here. Which is very good. This one means whenever they're in good territory, they will heal. So we get him. Increase the cost of our cargo value to a thousand which is the highest we can go at the moment and then pick a target that we like the look of i like to go for the darwi first so set caravan route here you can also shuffle through it on this and it will take you through them all first of all because you almost always get an item when you do this one and it's the most payback so in five turns we'll make 4600 gold in exchange for a thousand pretty good now this is a choice that i recommend because your biggest threat in this campaign is to the north so there's a man named Village to the north. He is a Chaos Lord, and he lives right here, and he's extremely powerful if you let him get out of control. Also, the Chaos Dwarves are quite dangerous, but they're less dangerous because they, they stack crap. So what you want to do is click on the Dragon Emperor's Wrath, because this ability is very good, even on Legendary difficulty. It does have a little trick to making it work, though. So click on Dragon Emperor's Wrath, and now this is facing this way. So we have essentially got 10 turns to take care of the north, before we head south, whereas we will switch it over to the Great Bastion so that the Bastion stops exploding all the time and we can use Celestial Intervention, which is a very powerful ability. Now we will look at Diplomacy. So Diplomacy is very important for Cathay because it's the best way to consolidate all the power on all of Cathay. So what we want to do is make sure that anyone we make agreements with is not at war with anyone that we really, really want. For example, our brother. So he is currently at war with the dissenters. So what we will not accept any contracts with them. However, the Jade Imperials are not. So what we'll do is we'll go into their non-aggression and trade, balance it, got it. So there we go. Now we have non-aggression and trade with them. Look into our trade deals. We can get the Celestial Loyalists. Don't worry about military access. Take the majority here. They're going to want military access later. You can take more money off them later. But at the moment, you're not going near their territory, so it doesn't matter. Look through the rest. Child of 
That brings us to the end of turn one. I recommend that you don't fast forward your end turns because you can get a lot of valuable information from watching end turns. We probably won't see anything now, but further in the campaign, you're going to see enemies move around and go into ambush stance and information like that, which is pretty helpful. Oh, look, we got a caravan event. So if we wanted to, we could add a noble to our army. Um, we have enough melee front lines, so I don't see the point. Every one that you add to this army is one that you can't gather later. So there's only 20 slots. So I would save it for beasts and you know more archers and stuff that have a bit more utility. Now, if you didn't choose Route Marcher, you wouldn't be able to reach this point. Whereas I would recommend that you stop right on your border. You can see it here if you zoom in, the green and red line. Green means your side, red means not your side. Simple as that. Stop there and recruit more peasant archers. Oh, I didn't recruit any peasant archers. Whoops. <laughs> now we'll be attacking this settlement here. Because we have Route Marcher, we can reach. Slightly different map, but still, piece of cake. Let's go. You know the usual plan. We put the balloon up at the front to tank as much damage as possible. This is easy to heal. We move everyone else back. Maybe spread the lines a little bit thinner. I like to keep my archers in a box formation because if they're in a box, an enemy comes from the side instead of the whole unit having to go like that to turn around. They literally just spin a tiny angle and they can keep firing. So they're more efficient. Much, much faster shooters when they're in a circle. A uh, square, sorry. Just fire at anything for now just because the trees will be obstructing our shots. Speed it up and I'll bring you back once this battle has commenced. I don't feel any need to rehash this, it's exactly the same thing. Stand even further forward and they won't even fire at your balloon. Dodge left, dodge right. Make sure you do it as they fire and then you'll dodge more shots. Our archers will clear them out quick enough. And I'll bring you back at the end of this fight. I suppose this is as good a time as any to introduce us to our other mage. So, she's a metal mage, she has a great spell. It's pretty easy the time, you'll get the hang of it. Um, place it slightly in front of the enemy and they will walk into it. Generally only cast magic like that, which isn't a vortex by magic like that, uh, on units that are already engaged in combat, because they'll be much easier to, to hit, otherwise they're, they're going to dodge it. The AI is very good at dodging it, and that's the beginning of metal magic. This spell is unbelievably powerful against Cav, that's my favourite target for it, it's Cavalry, and then you have a spell called uh, Gehenna's Golden Hounds, which you will unlock later is very good against uh, clumped up enemies. And then we just heal. Heal back up to full health again. Now if you're not confident in your ability to macro with Mao Ying to dodge arrows, I recommend that before the end of the first turn you recruit two peasant archers to join this army just for more killing power. I didn't do it mostly because I forgot but that's okay. <laughs> we'll recruit them now. So we're in this position here. Mao Ying, keep working on her magic. Life Bloom's a very good spell. Basically, whenever you cast, everyone in your army gets a little heal. Very good. I was born and you it. get Searing. We'll recruit two archer units. And then we'll be making our way over to Terracotta Graveyard. I recommend getting rid of the building that is in here. We're going to need this slot to balance out our uh, yin and yang next turn. Now that we're done with this, once we attack the next turn, we will recruit the new lord get in the balance here and I'll show you what it unlocks. Look at diplomacy. Always look at diplomacy at the end of your turns, so you never know, something might pop up. See, now they want 4.2 or extra 600 gold for a bit of uh, permission to move through our territory and vice versa. Do not take that peace treaty. If you take a peace treaty in the first 10 turns of your initial battle, you will lose reliability. It'll be like you declared war on them and then peaced out with them two turns later which is bad for your uh diplomacy and everyone in the game will declare war on you okay we have the two units being recruited we are ready to move on to the next two welcome back right i do what is necessary in this slot we have two turns until that grows and we can't balance it out yet so do not build anything the here yet you could build the iron if you wanted but we need the slot to keep Balance. If we look at the terracotta graveyard, you can see they have a plus six, a military presence of four. To figure out how many units there are, you times the amount of settlements by that amount, which gives us a total of eight. Maths with Mike. The 
Now we will attack this. I don't think their army will be here, but even if it is, it's a very easy fight to win, even if we're outnumbered. Oh, cool, they are. That's fine. This, this is one of the variables that will change. Sometimes I'll be at Poe Mike, sometimes I'll be at the Terracotta Graveyard. It's not a problem. It's an easy army to defeat, and I'll show you how to do it right now. But before we start that fight, what we want to do is go into here, recruit the Lord, and grab... Neither of these matter too much, so we'll grab this one here. And recruit three jade blooded crossbowmen. Jade, sorry, jade warrior crossbowmen. Attack. Peric victory. It is not a peric victory. It's a very easy victory because the map is unbelievably easy to dominate on. As you can see here, there's a massive choke point, and as you've been learning from the last two fights, you can dodge a lot of arrows if you're on a choke point. So start the fight. Our biggest concern being their cav. So, what I've done is I've set my archers up behind my melee line so they get their benefits of the yin and yang harmony. The mage is over here as well, just to support if she needs to. She can go into melee and most of the units are going to funnel through this tight situation here and hang out underneath Mao Ying, as you're about to see. Right. Tiger and archer, feel free to use the slow down button if at any point you're worried about um, any kind of conflict. Just remember, if you're in slow-mo, you have to click less frequently when you're dodging. Five more seconds, and then we'll take off, and that will delay them. Good time. Oh. That's one archer unit broken. Bring her forwards, and she is now in charge of basically absorbing all the shots for the rest of the fight. Try not to walk in front of your, uh, your rocket. Let's see. Now, for being in harmony, we get an ability called Ancestral Warriors. As long as you're in perfect harmony, you will get it. I recommend just dropping it right in the middle of something. And then targeting that location. So, killing them is fine. Though. They have no feelings. It's a video game. So target them with your rockets. Blow your units up. Be as skaven as you can be. And just get the enemy while they're in this giant clump. The more you kill now, the less you have to worry about. When they get to your front line. So their horses didn't even come at us, so we don't even have to worry about that. So what we can do, you select everyone, hold down the Alt key, drag them by clicking and dragging, and then hold down the Control key. You can let go of the Alt key. If you hold down Control, you can rotate them with left and right with your mouse. And we'll rotate. Oops. Let me click that. Now remember, this is on legendary difficulty, so if you're playing on the lower difficulty, they're all broken by at this point, or at least they're going on their way down being broken. Try to target the archers, they're the biggest threat, even against your melee units, they're the biggest threat, because they're going to they're gonna drizzle in, they're going to go in one unit at a time against eight archers, sorry, seven units of archers, five units of archers. Goodness. So they're not going to have a good time. This would be a cool place to have magic, but... Our magician is over there at the moment, and this magician doesn't have any useful magic for that kind of enemy clumping yet. She will eventually. If she had her talent ability, she'd be able to kill all of that in one cast. That's how powerful it is, so look forward to that one day. So we're sharing the damage across the two units, which is good. They walk directly under the balloon, feel free to drop a bomb on them, but get extra free kills. But yeah, see, that one unit's making its way over. And getting absolutely deleted. Alright, let's speed this up. As you can see, one of their archer units made it over. The only threat to us is these archers. So we do, just grab the jade crossbowmen and get them to fire. That might happen. As I said, you can just hit slow motion like I hit play just then. And go and sort, sort it out. Take two seconds to get on top. I might send her in just because those are hard to hit. Oh, if they're not on defensive, they will follow. So make sure you put your archers on defensive. Otherwise, they'll go chase after stuff. <laughs> Which is a little bit annoying. She can take that just fine. So we'll just let her do that. Hope for some well-placed rockets to help speed up the breaking. It should shatter very shortly. It'll be the end of this fight. What we do is we heal after they shatter. There we go. No damage. No damage. Well, not true. They have taken some damage, but easily fixed. Either let them walk off the map, which shouldn't take too long, or in the battle once you know you're fully healed. 
Yep, yeah, defeated them, and we occupy the city. Terracotta Graveyard has nothing useful either. Dem demolish that. We don't want those units. Recruit. Two more pairs and archers. Do not use your global recruitment. It takes multiple turns, and it's not worth it. If it takes more than one turn, you don't need it. Not in the early game. I enjoy Magic uh, Missile Mirror, but you can choose whatever spell you like here. This is a nice one because it's a constant passive. Whenever you cast a spell, this will happen. Uh, but we'll grab Missile Mirror. The Bastion's this defense this playthrough. Gehenna's Golden Hounds. And increase mobility. Two level ups. So she's level 5 now. Always check increase mobility. This Lord, that is recruiting. They're fine. We do want them because we're going to want those archers. Now, finally, look at Diplomacy. We can't be friends with them because they're friend not friends with our brother. Absolutely fine. They will die in no time. These guys want peace, but obviously we will not be doing that. Because we want all the territory that they have. Upgrade available. Skip that by hitting this button here. And move on. Now please excuse the fact that I'm super monotone and I sound kind of sick at the moment. It's because I'm sick at the moment. <laughs> so what we want to do here, we're one turn away from this technology going off. Now, we kind of have to make a gamble on what building we're going to be getting out of uh, Oh My. It doesn't really matter because we can destroy it before it's a threat. Yeah. But what we'll do is we will build. We want growth. You always want growth. So we need to get black. And we need to get white. They will balance each other out and keep us in harmony. And then we will attack Oh My. We're lucky there'll be a unit outside the settlement. Not so lucky. That is okay. That is the other option. If they're not here, I strongly recommend attacking the unit that is garrisoned outside of the settlement. Because then you can hit, fight everything outside. Uh, it's a very easy fight. And I have some footage of it, so I will send it. I'll add it at the end of this video and you'll be able to see it if you're interested. If you find yourself in that situation, you'll be able to watch that and win very easily. This is a settlement battle. Very easy settlement to attack. Especially with the amount of uh, archer superiority we have. Alright, let's go. I always find the quickest way to get yourself killed in a siege is to attack a tower. It will rip you into little bitty pieces unless you send someone up front to defend you. So what I do is I send both of these guys up to the wall. Whilst I let the artillery do its work. They will step off the wall because they're like, Oh, we can't attack this person. There's no point in us doing this. And they will retreat away. Let's aim at these archers here. Hold down the space bar. You can see their range red line is the range of their archers we can afford to bring our stuff up a little bit I get the gate please all right with Mao Ying what we can do is we can fly over and attack stuff on the wall if we want to she's very good at knocking enemies off the wall it's good fun it's a good thing to do once you've gotten a little bit better at the game and you're better at extracting your units away and use our magic while they're firing because they won't move and do a decent amount of damage but ultimately, you want to get them off the wall so that you can move your archers up and start killing them. There you go. That's her ability to knock stuff off. All those units that got knocked off died. I need to take off before this missile fires. Come on. Oh. oh. It fired at the units we just killed. Grab the two jade warriors. Move them up to the wall. Grab the three. Grab four. Grab four units of archers. Bring them up to the wall. So we can reach them. They cannot reach us. And they just methodically move forward. So move these guys here, the Jade Warriors. Get the other Jade Warriors, move them here. And then get line of archers. Keep them behind so that they get their harmony bonus. Get the dragon with them. Get that one with them. And if you like, bring the balloon to their territory. They're too timid to attack. So you can just get into position. They're worried about the dragon. They're like, oh, we don't want to fight a dragon. And now your archers get free play. They just get to fire as much as they like. We can test out this new spell. So this is it here. It's called Mirror Missile. Pass it on these archer unit here. So whenever they fire an arrow, instead of it going at us, it gets launched back into their face. If they fire. Come on, fellas, fire. Yeah, see? It's a very cool ability. I'll, I'll get rid of the thing so it's pretty easy to see what's going on. Basically, it's really good on artillery that does a massive amount of damage, like um, Empire Artillery is a good one to use it upon, I find. Target them. Moving forwards. Cast a heal here, just to get rid of the little bit of damage that they have done. Because the damage is quite low. And then 
holding uh, down the click, holding down alt, we move up to the next position. Do not be afraid to use your lords as tanks. Alright, I'll bring you back once we move up to the next position. I ended up using my summon of Ancestral Warriors just to hold them in place, and now we can, if we add some magic, oh, we're out of magic, so there's no more magic, that's okay. That does happen sometimes, but the archers are here, so they're not going to last very long. If you want, you can go and charge at him with her, but I don't think that's too much. Right, I'll bring you back. Now you may find yourself in a situation where your archers are firing at their lord, but he's dodging. In that situation, stop firing at him and go and punch him with someone. Or you could uh, move a little bit closer and then you won't miss as much, but he's probably going to charge at you. Just be wary of that. You just need to learn to adapt to that kind of situation. Losing a unit is not the end of the world. It's it's a little bit painful, but you can generally recruit them pretty quickly, depending on what you lose. Things you can't afford to lose right now are the balloon and the magician. You can lose the jade, uh, celestial dragon crossbows. It would suck because they are very good, but it's not the end of the world. The balloon, however, is your killing power. It does most of the killing. All right, moving on. Alright, occupying the settlement, and there we go, that is our enemy wiped out. Turn 4, and we have two regions, very good. And the building we got was a gang building, and next turn we unlock a yin technology, so we will keep that building. We're currently out of balance by 1, but next turn we will rebalance, so that is perfect. It is a money income building, that is fine, we are okay with income, so we'll just chuck any odd one on, probably research. Level up Mao Ying, more magic. Magic is good. That's a nice physical resistance one there. And it's, it's a good spell. If you use it. She ends up having too many spells and you generally don't use them all. But, you know, try things out. It's, it's good fun. Magic is very powerful. Okay, so now we're currently at 15 units. Including these two that will be there next turn. So what we want to do is bring over these six. I know it's, there's only three there now. But we will be recruiting a few more. Let's get a gun unit. I usually don't use them, but let's grab a gun unit. Upgrade the settlement. Wonderful. And then we'll have a look at the diplomacy. Shuffle through it, and we'll see. It You'll be surprised how often you'll miss a confederation if you don't click on that button every turn. You can have a look at the Ivory Road. This guy's still three turns away from his uh, destination. There's a chance that he'll get a shortcut, but we'll see over the next couple of turns. And we are almost at max power, so we can use the Dragon Empress Wrath. Right, moving on. Right, so we were ambushed by some ogres, which is fine. It happens a lot when you go up into the ogre territory, even if you have um, treaties with them, because this is just like a random faction. So what we'll do is we'll fight it. We're not going to give up a peasant archer, that's ridiculous. You could auto resolve this if you want to, but I will show you the fight. Uh, we will be going into territory where we take attrition, as we already have, as you can tell by our health. So it's good to fight these, and it's a very easy fight. Your only targets are the ogres. That's it. They are all the power here. Um, these lions will die running into your spears, so don't worry about them. But try and target down the ogres, because once they break, everyone else will break, and it'll be all over. The noblars have very little balance of power effect. I'm going to show you a quick trick to forming out your units. Say you wanted these higher tier jade warrior helper tiers on your wing, on your flanks. What you do is you drag it across, deselect it, and then select them as a group. And now they'll be on both ends. You have to make sure you deselect it though, because if I were to drag him and then shift click without deselecting him, he will not change his position. So make sure you deselect them, and then drag them, and then it will switch. So what we want to do is we want to hold this corner. We want to protect against the lions. Actually, we can hold this. This is fine. We'll hold this flat. Nice wide line. Easy peasy. They have no archers. We have plenty. Yeah, nice and wide like that. Start the battle. Now, because they attacked us, they will be aggressive. So they will come at us. One way to tell if an enemy is going to be aggressive or not is when you start the fight. Before you start it. Have a look at clo how close they are to the deployment line. If they are right up against it with every single one of their units, they're going to attack you. They're going to be aggressive. So you can, can almost always bank on that. Now, what I should have done with these archers was make them nice and square. They're, th they're damaged, so they're kind of hard to square out. But that seems like a square to me. They're going to be targeting down the big scary threats, such as the Lord, if they can. The Lord is a bit harder to target down, obviously, because he's a 
single entity. It's a beast wizard, that's fine. That's your target. Nice, alright, we can bring these guys around the side. Deal with the flank. They are dead. Now as you can see, they just rotate on spot. Instead of having to reform entirely, they rotate and they fire very more, much more efficiently. Very more. <laughs> Hold that down there. Stop these guys from constantly flanking us. As soon as that Lord's breaks, they're done. There we go. Piece of cake. So these guys took a bit of a beating, mostly friendly fire. But that's okay. Let them fire whatever they want. The more you kill, the more money you get. Even if they completely shatter and it's a settlement fight, you should still try and kill everything. If you can. So as you know, normally I would take money, but because this is my caravan, I'm going to take the Brooklyn Ishmael. See if we can get them just a little bit healthier. Because they are going to continue to take uh, damage because they're currently here. Yep. So they're taking attrition because of the territory they are in. Great way to introduce yourself to a bunch of other stuff. Alright, so we're moving down the middle now. Hardened Baboon doesn't give us plus or minus on Harmony. And as you can see, our Harmony is still in Harmony. Now what we want to do is force march this lady. Basically, as long as she's in range of Yao Ming. Um, Yao Ying, sorry. Come over to here and grab the archers and the gun. In exchange, she can have one of my piece of archers. And she can start heading back. She needs to start recruiting to defend this gate. So the gates are our priority, for the most part. Now I'd recommend upgrading Palme. Palme, sorry. So that you can get the uh, marble. Everything else is ticking along just fine. And we are a turn or two away from being able to pop. No, we're one, uh, one turn away from being able to pop the Emperor's Wrath. Right, we are ready to move on. Let's have a look at our diplomacy. See if anyone wants to confederate or trade. We've achieved, uh, we've, we've gotten a common caravan encounter. One which gives us replenishment in foreign territory. And one that gives us additional cargo. Every time I've clicked grab the medicine, it has not worked. So I don't do that anymore, I just get the cargo. Just take the cargo, try it if you like, maybe it'll work for you, but this it hates me, so. <laughs> right, military presence of 20 in there. I recommend going along this direction to do the next attack. Do this click here. Force march into the turtle gate. We have the permission to walk in their territory. Okay, so we can upgrade another settlement. We'll upgrade this one. Uh, it will only take four turns because it is a suitable climate it's green where this wing chang is actually a mountainous climate which is unpleasant to us and it makes everything take a bit longer so it actually takes six turns instead of four let's do that move this lady back she can actually walk back which is good they're right on the edge of our territory and the snake gate start recruiting more stuff so at the moment we can't afford to recruit uh, all three but that is fine Perfect. the next turn we should get a good and yep we're going to get a nice bit of money next turn this cargo didn't actually go up so I don't think any of those work. Now, this compass. Sometimes it doesn't like to work. You click the button and this awesome glitch happens where everything turns grey. I will show you. It's probably going to happen because it's happened every other time. Now, as you can see, I can't click anything. This will happen to you as well. It's annoying. It's stupid. This is Warhammer. The, only, the way I've found that consistently works to get out of it is to click on uh, campaign search and then just click any one of these, drag your camera away, hit the escape key, so it brings up this screen, hit home, hit resume game, and then spam the home key. And voila, now we can close it, and we have control again. So be it. There you go. Welcome to Warhammer. Now, everyone out here is now taking attrition. So that's good for us and bad for them. And we want to go out there and also potentially take attrition. Our target is a village. And every turn they're going to take a massive amount of attrition, which is one. Alright, diplomacy. Cafe. If we were to have taken a contract with uh, the dissenters, then we'd have like negative 15, negative, even more potentially, with our brother. This isn't our brother, but with our brother. Greatest. Which is not good, because you really want to confederate him, because he's the only other legendary lord that you can use once you confederate. And then you have two dragons, and that's fucking cool. Alright, moving on. Got another uh, scenario pop up. We can get growth in all provinces, but we get plus six yang harmony, so we'd have to balance it out with two yin lords. Or the opposite, six control and then two yin. However, we can't really afford that. So what we're going to do is going to execute the alchemist. And we got forty-eight hundred gold, so we got a little bit of cash now, which is good. And we also got an item, as you always get an item when you do that campaign. So Miao Ying, she could have that. Go on here, grab it, chuck it on. It's 
scroll of glass. We should put that on the someone, I guess. Ah! Uh, let's switch it around. Let's put the scroll of glass on Miao Ying. She'll be able to use it when she's in her dragon form. This is our uh, lord, the trader lord. Now, I think the most important one is to get this. Tier, tier 8, uh, level 8, sorry. It gives you uh, replenishment in enemy territory. In foreign territory. Which is very good, because otherwise you tend to find yourself very low on health. Uh, if you level up before you get there, I recommend better scales. So you get a little bit more money. However, if you don't, chuck it into there as well. Avoid getting ambushed. 50% chance of avoiding an ambush is substantial. Alright, we can now afford to get another caravan. We have Rough Rider, same one that was there earlier, and Longmar. Okay, so there's a, a flying unit. Flying cab unit. They're not the easiest to deal with, but I'll get them anyway. Crank them up, and we're going to go and see the vampires. I'm basing it purely on how many turns it takes to do stuff, so that they have a good, nice synchronization of cycle movement. Now we we'll switch our stance to encamp stance, and we're heading out inside the gate. Village is going to be standing right here next to this settlement, probably. It's a high chance. We need another one of them, and two more. Just, yeah. Check your settlements, make sure everything is growing healthily, and then go into diplomacy. These turns are quite short, but it starts going off very quickly, so just keep an eye on Confederation in particular. You will get the Jade uh, Imperial Warrior, uh, Wardens excuse me, to Confederate soon, and then you'll have all the gates. But you kind of want to wait and make sure that they're upgrading the gates to a decent level before you do, because the AI builds stuff a lot faster than you ever will be able to. Okay, our compass is still facing that direction. We're still currently burning them down with our ability. Let's move on. This will be the last turn of the attrition, so we want to kill them this turn if we can. There's Village. Looks like we have to use our other army to fight him. Which is a bit unfortunate, because that army can't really win against him. But with the assistance of the gate, we should be fine. Alright, we've been attacked again, so you get to see what these guys do. Oh, it's Goldtooth. Okay, it's just cargo. I think what we'll do, we want to get trade with Goldtooth, so we will pay up. Depending, sometimes this is worth paying. We're not going to lose a unit. If you're going to lose a unit, never do it. But if it's just a little bit of cargo, then it's worth it. So that should give us trade with them. So look at Village. All his units are at half health. Hopefully, we have enough here to fight this fight. Go to the Dragon Gate. Go and war against. Up until Mistral. And exchange, I'll do a defensive alliance. But honestly, don't do that. Just take the money. Because I'll give you two grand. Oh, we're in here. We'll just take a check of the diplomacy before we start this fight. Put Mao Ying into March stance and attack. Let's start this fight first. This is a very easy map to fight. It's a lot of not scary stuff for us to fight. Too. So let's go. Some of you might be looking at their blue bar and asking what it is. It's called Barrier. It's because they are the vassal of Village, who is a sentient lord. The Barrier basically is an extra health bar but because their health is so low the barrier is very weak so the barrier is 200 it is on this unit of marauders the barrier is ah oh, it's also 200 okay normally it's based on health points maybe it's because the fight hasn't started yet so we'll find a nice defensive position for ourselves so i decided to form up on this corner because we can use this to prevent the horses from flanking us too heavily and we can use our lord to prevent them on this side with guns uh they're still gonna push through a little bit but i don't think it's gonna threatening also our artillery has maximum time to punish their units as they're approaching us so let's get this started first thing we need to do is move everyone over to the side just a smidge just to lock them into that position you will see your families again this the storm dragon they actually move backwards as well which might be a good idea just narrow it up yeah let's do that let's move speed it up and put all the archer units on Help. All right, once they make their way over to us, they're going to die. <laughs> make sure our line of sight's good on our guns. Yeah, it's excellent. But they're not going to struggle to fire. We'll box these guys up, make them hard to charge through. Move them forward a little bit. Now the rockets begin. So the horses engaged us on this flank here, and we wiped out one of them, and the other one might, might make it off the map. We'll see. Aim for the clump. Yep, no, they broke. Aiming for the clumps. Speed it up. But they's quite a defensive faction, so you don't have to do anything. You can just stay back and enjoy the ride. That's why they're so powerful as a of faction. What we can do is wait for these guys to charge. They are going to try and range for a little while, because they, they've got a lot of ammunition. But we'll rotate our arrows, and that way. 
Okay, he won't really do any real damage. And use our spell here to slow anything down. That's too quick if we need to. But I don't think it's too much of a concern. I'm just selecting random targets. There's no real thought process there. It's just, you know, that was an enemy. I want to hit it. So where's the guy with half barrier? So his barrier was 186 points initially. 120, yeah. So they do have less barrier if they're damaged. Good, I'm not going crazy. Now I'm a little bit concerned that they're going to break through here. But I don't think it's a threat. Nice and slow. And put that there. She's holding the line just fine over there. And they are not a threat anymore. Oh. Drop that right there. Step the archers back. Nothing has to be panicked. Nothing has to be quick. Just get them back so that they can fire again. Heal the Lord. And I think we've more or less won this now. So she can be a dragon and get out of there. She can escape combat at any point. One of her strongest points is that ability. So. Firing at the horses. Done. Uh, loot and occupy the settlement. It's not worth any money, but you're not going to get anything out of it anyway. And also, you want to be in the settlement so that you can't be ambushed by our friend Village. Once he retreats from this fight, that's coming his way. As expected, he retreated. Now we can see his unit health. So he's not taking attrition anymore, which I thought he would still be doing. But I guess it's because he backed off. So we are taking attrition out here now. It's not great. Allocate shifts uh, as required. So we can do that. He will retreat. Perhaps it. towards Mao Ying, and she'll be able to hit him next turn. With Village's main I army dead, he's not replenishing, which is perfect. You. It's gonna be a lot easier to fight. Still not an easy fight, but his wizard does a lot of damage with his Seren Doom, and Village does a fair bit of damage with his blue fire inch. But we'll see, actually. We're in a pretty scary position here, because he can teleport stance onto us. No, I think we can step out. We can step away. We can get far enough away from him where it's not a threat, I think. We'll see. We'll see what happens. He's either going to teleport over and kill us or he's not. But that is a throwaway army, so it's not a threat. Upgrade this. And that will have to wait now, because we don't have a building to balance it out. Do nothing with this settlement. Uh, you're not going to maintain it. You don't want to maintain it. It's in a really horrible place. If anything, you want to trade it to um, these guys, maybe, or even the Jade... Uh, custodians, is that what their name is? I speak with the wisdom of Imperial Guard Wardens. So don't do anything with the settlement. Destroy the secondary building. It potentially already threw your yin and yang out of harmony, so get rid of it. Um, don't bother repairing this. Don't abandon it either, though. It can be a good resource for trading. So we will keep it, and we will have a diplomacy before we move on to the next Lord turn. Majesty. And we will see what happens with Village. Generally speaking... You're going to be able to kill Village in this situation. That is your goal. Your goal is to kill him before he becomes a threat. Our only concern now is that he might teleport onto this guy, and then we have to fight him with the small army, which we're not going to succeed, and he'll be in our territory. But that's just part of Warhammer. Things do go out of control sometimes. There's no perfect guide. Moving on. This is why you don't uh, fast forward. You wouldn't have seen any of this happening. So obviously we have some beastmen in our territory, which we knew about already. As egg has been completely wiped out by Chaos Dwarfs. Yep. So he presents a 17, so he's got 34 units right there. Ready to defend. And we can reach this. He's not replenishing you. though, so he's not a threat to us. Our only concern is that he teleports onto us. So what we're going to do is we're going to force march Mao Ying Stop over into their territory. Then range. On and we're going to attack with this lady. Unfortunately, we will not be able to attack twice. I don't demise. think, but we'll find out. He will retreat. Of course he will. Oh, he went behind the bushes. That's a bit rude. Now we have to try and ambush him. We can. So she can't move any further, but that's okay. Take a little bit of attrition over the end turn. Uh, this is ten balls. Now, technology-wise, we're just aiming down the middle. Until we see something that we want basically you just look at the technology and if you see something that interests you go for it just remember to balance it out i generally don't start turning off uh the center line until i get to moonwood and yang kilns 
just for the construction reduction. Very nice. And also the improved winches is very powerful. Always good. Alright. And this is turn 9. I was hoping to have dealt with them by now, but we haven't. So let's get non-aggression with these guys. Nothing else available. If you're lucky, you would have had a confederation by now. As soon as you get a confederation, just take it. You, you get some debuffs for a couple of turns, but it's, it's not a bad thing. It's good. Moving on. Here come the puppets of Misrule. Are he running? He's running. So the AI knows the perfect distance to move so that you can attack them once, but you can't attack them twice. So he is out of our reach, but I will show you just in case. If we fight this, we don't want to lose the peasant archers. Because it's the end of the guide, I will auto resolve it, but generally, fight them. You don't want to lose that many units, as you can see, it took a lot more damage than we would have if we had fought it manually. Got Shrik and Felix have arrived. They are. Where are they? Yeah. You can get them, they're free lords to maintain. It's pretty good. Child of the night. Yeah, we can't even reach them. It's quite interesting. Warden of the Great Bastion. But he's also not replenishing, so what we're going to do is head towards his, uh, his settlement. So, it is unfortunate that he ended up going this way, but generally speaking, if he does that, that's fine. You just have to chase him, kill him. Otherwise, head out towards the Red Fortress and come and wipe it out before they get too much military presence. I will show you a video of me defeating the Red Fortress, so you can see that it's possible and that it's quite an easy fight. Take rest while you can. But otherwise... Let's return to our territory. I think Head towards his. He can, he can play around out there passively as long as he likes, but we'll get rid of the settlement. He's not leveling up. That's his, that's his big concern. We don't want him to level up. He can raid all day. It doesn't matter. And if the AI sees you, there's nothing you can do to hide from them. Uh, get away. Uh, sorry, to capture them. So you just have to keep moving. He will attack the Dragon Crossroad. It's not a problem. What we can do is go to these guys. And trade them the settlement. Give them the Dragon Crossroad, and then they can defend it, and they'll give us a little bit of money. So now it's no longer our concern, and also it's not our cost. So that's perfect. Now we've defeated the external threat, so if you want to, you could do this again. I'd recommend leaving this uh, non select. Don't select anything. It is still ticking up, you'll still be able to use this because it's facing that direction. But if you need to, if there's a threat internally, you can switch over to the Great Bastion and you'll get Celestial Intervention, which is a very powerful ability. It's a bombardment spell. Basically, lock them in place with your um, Ancestral Warriors and then drop the bomb on them. Press hit as many units as you possibly can. So over here, we're going to build money. So we've got a Yang building. Uh, sorry, a Yin building. So we need a Yang. Just to balance it out. Keep it even. Yep, upgrade this so we can move towards cannons and also an Astromancer. Then delete the building. And get an alchemist or pots up to you or if you want cab cab not very good cab though so sorry i take that back build the uh, marble here and build the white building here done now we're nice and even still and we're heading towards the city and the same skill point so this is the lord that just made his way through that fight so we'll give him better scales great efficiency Upper selection. Do not select anything. It is still working. Home seat. City commander. And there we go. I was hoping in the first 10 turns I'd be able to get rid of village. Which I have been able to consistently. And I'm sure when you follow this guide it will happen for you. If it doesn't, he is your biggest threat. Kill village. Eventually the cow stalks will come, become a threat. But they're full of chaff. They're full of very weak units that break really, really quickly. So basically target down their chaos dwarf units. Blunderbuss come first because they will kill anything in like two volleys. So get rid of that as quick as possible with the balloon and then uh, wipe out the rest. Be wary of what spells they have. Try not to pile up too much if they have metal magic, but otherwise just have fun. Try and enjoy the campaign. If you're not enjoying it, then start a different campaign. There's no point in being miserable. It's a single player game. <laughs> you're, not, you're not taking a bullet for anyone. So what we'll do is we know he's there. We know he's right there. Okay, we can see exactly where he is because of this mission. He's in there raiding. He's raiding these guys. Yep, raiding. It's minus six. But he's not healing, so he's really weak. So we're going to head over to his capital. We're going to defeat his capital, which does have a military presence of ten. So there's ten units there. But it's a really easy settlement to win. 
and I will add a video of that at the end of this so you can have a look and see what's going on. All right, I hope this helps at least one person out there. Let everyone know that it's here. Uh, make sure you keep your buildings upgraded as often as possible. I wouldn't generally go past level 2 in the growth buildings, but you can if you like. Uh, they just don't have very good return. The buildings are very cheap, and they do give additional buffs, so there are good reasons to go for it. There's an extra 1% there. Um, and then once you get to tier 5, get rid of them and replace them with something else. Try and keep your yin yang in perfect harmony all the time. And once this Bastion threat reaches 100%, which takes a while, especially if you uh, have the Great Bastion set, because it reduces it by 2%, Bring it down to four and if you own all four of the dragon gates there's a provincial skill uh, setting so one of these ones here that reduces the threat by one so it goes up one percent every turn so it takes a hundred hundred turns to pop if you get it down that low if you can get this down to zero percent when it does pop a few armies are going to appear initially the cow's force will probably kill them all because they are at war with them uh but then the second time you're going to have to deal with them but you can upgrade the dragon gates with a building that makes it so that the upkeep for the armies in them is 65% less. So you can have very powerful armies in each of the turtle gates and not worry too much about the cost on the map. As long as you don't move them out of the area, because then the price will go through the roof. But there you go, that is my guide. I hope this helped you. How's your hand? You can copy this word for word. It's going to change every time you play because it's a sandbox, that's what happens. But this will help you get there. Especially if you're on a lower difficulty, it's going to be a cakewalk. Just learn, remember to move and maneuver with the dragon, kill everything with the rockets, and set your units up so that they can kill everything that approaches them. You can go real heavy archers, or you can get, like, I would normally have one more spearman here, four wide, just so that they get the harmony across the map, but I didn't do that, because I just didn't do that. <laughs> so yeah, be wary of that. Try and maybe four, four pieces of military melee, and then use your lords as uh, tanks as well, and let the archers do the damage. They are your killing power, they will always be your killing power. Artillery is also helpful, but it's ancillary. It's, it's there to help reduce their numbers before they get to the line where the archers kill everything. Right, that is everything, and I will catch you later. Don't forget to catch me when I'm streaming, and I will see you there. Right, bye!